uh, you know, uh, along with the change in technology as well as cultural construct. So in this process of development, different societies or communities, along with the environment, develop a sense of occupational uh, uh, identity, which in turn brings the sense of solidarity and harmony among the individual members of the society or communities. When we use these terms, identities, uh, solidarity, harmony, uh, there are lots of things which are really involving, but uh, taking some points like sharing of knowledge, and definitely differences and uh, disagreements are always there. And these kind of the concepts keep on passing from generation to generation. Taking healthcare problem or healthcare, health system as one issue, uh, I will just start focusing on that. Uh, when we suffer from uh, uh, any kind of health problem, say let's take headache, cold, or say running nose, etc. We are also sure that we are totally exposed to different kind of the health problems. And our immediate expression of a need and appreciation of such health problems are just buying medicine from the nearby chemist. If we know the tablets already, the name of the tablets, then we'll just go to the pharmacy and find out the availability and collect the tablets and then we'll just consume that in order to recover the whole you know, health problems. And if we don't know, then we'll just go to the chemist and find out that, you know, have you got anything uh, for headache and all those things. Then the chemist will suggest that these are the best for this kind of the problems, doses and all those things. So these kind of the health scenarios, healthcare system has been you know, found, particularly in Manipur. And definitely in contemporary uh, modern societies also, health still remains unexplored and neglected area uh, of societies. And maybe because of low economic, socio-economic condition, uh, as well as scarcity of resources. And now a stage has also come here that medicine alone doesn't resolve the issues of health. Because it's, it's really complex in order to understand the whole issues of health. Having said that, uh, today let me take this healthcare pluralism in Manipur based on the narratives and experiences in order to give a blueprint of uh, those kind of the healthcare systems in order to document, in order to uh, engage, in order to develop sort of you know healthcare delivery systems uh, in different parts or in different social scenario. Now, uh, when we think and talk about health, we generally come with different questions: that what actually is that? What happened? How is it caused? And then, uh, you know, what do we do at this moment? And before we go into the details of what is that, how is it caused, where to go, let me just give a brief conceptual understanding of health from various definitions. Uh, here I have taken health as a best way for understanding a situation-based concept where various complex relationships have been involved. Here, what I wanted to say is that every culture has its own social beliefs and cultural systems. And based on that uh, kind of the social norms and cultural belief systems, they have their own concepts of understanding health. In a society, a group of people may consider a particular you know, incident as very serious case of the health problem, but the other cases may not be considered that particular case as a very serious issue of health. Like we can take the example of Goiter. Goiter in the Himalayan regions, especially in the top Himalayan regions, they don't consider goiter as a major health issue. That remains as a part of their culture. And they also think that you know, those kind of health problems developed with the onset of their age. Likewise, when we look at the, uh, the, this particular concept of health from the biomedical point of aspect, social science point of view, or as an administrator or ecologist, we have different views and interpretation on it. So it is not definitely a situation-based concept. We also know that it's common to all. In, uh, if I'm not wrong, in 1977, World Health Assembly uh, has announced for health for all in order to achieve it by this year 2000 by all the citizens of the world in order to have a social and economically productive life. And the oldest definition of health is still considered as absence of disease, and this is also the unit, uh, you know, basic understandings from the biomedical point of view. 
health is also considered as equivalent to harmony, where harmony is being considered as, you know, we remain being peaceful with ourselves, with self, communities, gods and cosmos. Then it is also considered as disturbances. When we talk about the disease, it is also considered as disturbances in the bodily humor. And definitely it's a, you know, part and parcel of the adaptation to environment. Besides all the, you know, definitions provided, we still have this WHO's definition of health given in 1948. Even if it has been criticized by different people, we still accept, means it's been widely accepted as the definition, best definition of health, where it's been said that it's a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely an absence of disease or infirmity. Now, uh, if we want to understand the health conditions or healthcare systems, if we want to know anything about health, we need to again differentiate between these terminologies, the terms which we generally use. Because generally as you know, a lay person, we always mix up with these terms, sickness, illness, and disease. But it has got different meanings. Like when we use the term sickness, it's a personal feeling or a concept of discomfort a mental construct, a subjective, you know, uh, way of understanding discomfort. But when that kind of the discomfort, discom which when conveyed to the significant others, say suppose I have that kind of the discomfort, when I convey that one to some significant others in the sense, my friends, key members or family members, then they will again relate that one with uh, some kind of the folk etiology, means some kind of the terminologies bringing the, you know, causative essence and all then that kind of the discomfort becomes as categorized or recognized as illness. So it can be considered as a cultural construct of discomfort. While disease is a pathological concept, this occurs when a physician diagnosed and found abnormalities in the structure and function of body and system. A therapy management group. This is also a particular term which we really need to understand where it includes a set of, what actually it means is that a set of kinfolk, friends, acquaintances, and community members who confer with the healer and representatives of his or her support structure in the healing process. So here I don't need to explain much, everybody knows it. Uh, healthcare system, when we use the term healthcare system, it's actually the social relationship which revolves around the healer and a particular patient or uh, any patient. Here, we include all this kind of, when we talk about the social relationship revolved around this health and passion, it involves the organizational structure and management, improvement of health and services, which may be, you know, uh, are this uh, different health schemes, prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation. Now, uh, in the present scenario of India, part and part given different types of the healthcare system, and according to him, it's been categorized into five different healthcare systems. <coughs> now, uh, coming to Manipur, I have just collected some of the data from NFHS 3 2006 information on this kind of the health information. But whatever the information which has been provided in the report of this National Family Health Survey, uh, it uh, shows that there are lots of gaps in understanding the health reports also. Why I'm saying is that uh, this whole report of HIV, infant mortality, goiter, diabetes, source of health care, health insurance, everything is based on this number of population, 4512 women, 3951 men from 3498 households, where they have also written that the response rate were more or less, say, 98 to 99%. In that sense, if we are dealing with different 3,498 households, if you divide that one with the total number of populations, then each household has at least two to three individuals only. And that is not a fact, you know, that is not the reality which is found in Manipur. So I really doubt, means uh, the way they have been reported, definitely it's been done with uh, one TNS limited <coughs> India, New Delhi. This group of people have collected through NFSS. Now, uh, coming to the fishermen, this is my uh, fill area, which I have done during my PhD time, and this uh, weavers, which is, uh, again, still continuing project of mine on material culture. Uh, so uh, this uh, island community, we all know about Manipur, the presence of Loktak Lake, and presence of 14 islands in Loktak Lake, but we all know that it's the only inhabitant. Inha it's the only 
uh, you know, inhabited island in this locked up uh, region. Uh, while talking about this, uh, I have a total survey of this village community. While the weavers, I have a sort of random study collection of the weavers because of the shortest of time as also it's an ongoing project. I have few numbers and data regarding these weavers. But the general illnesses and diseases which I have reported generally uh, based on uh, the data which I have studied was mainly of the skin problem. It is much more prevalent in the island region because of various reasons, because uh, mainly because of their, you know, lack environmental condition or the ecosystem in and around that particular area. <coughs> Because whenever they expose or they go out to the fumes and fumdis, they are also exposed to different insects, worms, and different kinds of the varieties. This is the main reason of you know, getting infection of skin. Other than this, they have different health problems, mainly like uh, BP, diabetes, headache, blurred eye is a very common incident because they are always exposed from the you know, morning, early morning, before even you know, sunrise till the nighttime in the lake. So definitely uh, that uh, gives different you know, results of the health condition. But while talking about the weavers, we generally find uh, mainly problems of, you know, stress and anxiety, and then backache, and definitely diabetes. Uh, so uh, I thought of putting some sort of comparison because, uh, you know, the health problem is something, you know, based, uh, which is somewhat related with their occupational structure only. But at this moment, as due to the lack of the data on the other side, that is, we were, I'm not able to make a total comparison of this growth of the study uh, sections. But uh, the overall healthcare system and practitioners, even if Park and Park have uh, provided five different healthcare systems in India, Different scholars have also provided, you know, the overlapping of these different healthcare systems. And based on this, and also the availability of the situation in that island area as well as among the weavers, I found it much more, uh, you know, uh, prevalent to use this kind of the terminologies like folk sector, popular sector, folk sector, and professional sector. When we say the word popular sector, it means only um, those, you know, untrained individuals like in the family members, relatives, or social networks only. But when we use the term folk sector, definitely comes the healer. Maybe a formal or informal sort of trainings might have than professional sectors, and it's been categorized into these groups. I'm not going to explain about this uh, sorts of uh, practice they are performing, but definitely this photograph shows that uh, this person, this person is the only, uh, you know, uh, physicist, a sort of, uh, you know, quack, or you can call it the chemist, okay, which is available in that particular island region, and he is trying to remove fish bone, which has been stuck in the uh, middle to uh, middle finger of this particular uh, boy. So, in any kind of the emergency or any kind of the health problems, this owner of the chemist is the only, you know, uh, you know, resort point for them, and. And definitely, whenever they have any problem, this is again the major, you know, problem of understanding their health issues. They go back to this kind of uh, ritual procedures and rites uh, pertaining to different health problems. Now, you have five more minutes. Oh my God! <laughs> okay, I'm skipping this then. I'm skipping behavior. Uh, okay, I'm so sorry. I left, left my guest status here. I'll just uh, go through very quickly these two case studies to understand the healthcare systems. Uh, that is uh, the first case which I'm going to under uh, read out is one very Chandra of 57 years old retired teacher. He is suffering from high blood pressure from the age of 40s. He consulted to one of his doctor friend, uh, but use of local medicine, peruk, uh, um, kanfal. Ikai tabi, banana stem, etc., have become his regular duty. He takes steam bath once in a week. In that steam bath, one zero different medicinal herbs are collected in an earthen pot tightly covered by seven layers of banana leaves. After boiling those herbs, 
he was made to kneel over the pot. His body was covered with thick blankets so that the steam passes throughout his body for 10 to 15 minutes. After such steaming and removing the sweats, oil made from mustard or sunflower seed or tavale oil was applied to the body. He followed a strict diet and regular exercise, walks, etc. So he felt to be a normal healthy person. He told me that before 30 years of his age, he got a severe skin disease, white patches on the chest. On the chest, one of his relatives suggested him to take and apply piruk powder, singari powder, and kanghu powder. He used them and cured from the skin problem. He prefers only medical, medicinal herbs and still preferring on it. He told that the herbal medicines do not have any side effect. One's good health is very much dependent on his or her own personal satisfaction. The second case study which I'm going to read is of one Sanahal Devi of uh, this particular island region. She's the caliber of the she's 60 years old widow. She's the caliber to bring up six children with our father. So I visualize her a very strong woman. Her experience as a saleswoman in Imam Market Infal is awe inspiring. She hardly had time to give a thought for her health. This cliche, the cliche health is wealth, is relegated to backseat for a woman like her who needs to run a household and has to survive seven pairs of hand. Every day she stays there from 8 to 5.30 p.m. For her, Emma Market is a home uh, away from home. She has to travel 48 kilometers. She leaves her home with an empty stomach and has heavy breakfast at the market with oily toast bread and junk foods. After having a long hectic work of convincing the customers at a certain amount with a tea break and a tinge of gossiping around with her soul mats, she returns back home. A hot meal was kept ready for her. The aroma of food whetted her appetite and formed her lost hunger. Uh, she gluten down whatever was served for dinner. She relishes fish and omelette. No one in the family can compete with her in the consumption of kang ho and fish pokora. She also lives on table salts, finding that whatever made for meals are tasteless without addition of table salts into it. Some years ago, she experienced episodes of dizziness during her walk, but she didn't care as she knew that she won't get any seriousness because of her knowledge and belief to control these using powder water. That is chanted water with incantations or what we call mantras. She is very much fond of oily foods with a little stronger salt than the others in taste. She used to have lots of chili chutney which uh, gave her stomach pain frequently. She tried to reduce it but couldn't handle successfully. Instead, uh, she's is uh, using raw green singzu with fermented and dry fish inside that her salt and chili is a compulsory. She told me that she never knew that doctors were there and used to get local medicines from the Maiba to cure any kinds of the diseases. But recently she got dizziness very frequently and all her meds suggested to go for a medical checkup. She hardly gave importance except only when she fell serious in front of the village chemist where a meeting of the village uh, folks were supposed to help. From that day onwards she was confirmed of high blood pressure and started taking off tablets. Then she became totally dependent on it. She never leaves it wherever she goes as it gives relief from uneasiness and her state of being sick. One day when she was traveling in a bus as usual she suddenly fell very sick with strong headache and blurred eyesight which, make her, which made her to take four tablets with the belief that it could handle the situation. But as opposed to it, she found herself in the hospital. Her habit of taking tablets with doses over the required amount met the unwanted situation. After that, she became very conscious of her diet instead of tablets so as to control her chronicity. Like her, many of the people knowingly or unknowingly met a habit of taking these life-saving tablets into life-threatening. They are taking it as if a placebo for their health conditions. Uh, I give you three more minutes. Yeah, okay. Uh, see, it? conclusion, I think uh, most of you might have read and I have also mentioned, so I'm not just... Uh, you know, I'm just keeping the conclusion also. It's all affected by the physical environment, therefore, sanitation, hygiene, and all this kind of the habits. Uh, but, you know, the coexistence of all kind of the healthcare systems uh, based on the earliest slides and all, I conclude here as the existence of medical pluralism. 
But here I want to throw a question to everyone that which one we are supposed to because when you talk or when you rely as an educated person, you can't say that we, you know, rely mainly on traditional. So which one we are supposed to accept? Is it traditional, modern or medical pluralism? And if we are supposed to accept this medical pluralism, then which part we are supposed to select first? Is it first awareness and adaptation or getting information on epidemiology or healthcare development schemes? Thank you.